If you are watching this video, hopefully you have found your way to slide 7 of my Magnificent Congruent Triangles presentation. If not, you can find a link to it in the uh, description of this video. So we had a few tasks that we needed to do given some images and the work provided or the work needed to show uh, why these answers were true took up a little bit more space than I wanted to type into the presentation, so I'm going to do it by hand here. All right, so for this particular image, we were tasked with finding the measure of angle X, Y, Z, as well as the measure of angle X, Y, W. So let's look at where those two things are on the picture. The measure of angle X, Y, Z is that big angle up there. And the measure of angle X, Y, W is the smaller angle right there. So I am going to start out with the measure of angle X, Y, Z. If we can see here that we have a triangle with an exterior angle. And by the exterior angle theorem, we know that the sum of these two interior angles is equivalent to this, that exterior angle. So to find the measure of angle x, y, z, we just need to use some algebra. We know that 5x plus 2 plus the other angle, 8x plus 4, is equivalent to that exterior angle, which is 5x minus 18. So now it's just a matter of using a little bit of algebra. So first thing I'm going to do is combine like terms. So we're going to have 13x plus 6 equals 15x minus 18. Subtract 13x from both sides. And I'm going to add 18 to both sides. So then I end up with 24 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 2, which is all fine and good, but that's not really what we're trying to find. We actually have to find the measure of angle x, y, z. Now we know that angle x, y, z is equivalent to 15 times x minus 18. But we know that x is not 2, it's 12. And so we can plug that 12 in, not 2, 12. We can plug that in. We can do some algebra. And we are going to end up with the measure of angle x, y, z being 180 minus 18, which is 162. Now, we also needed to find the measure of angle x, y, w. And angle x, y, w, we can see that, well, we can do this a couple of different ways. I know that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180, so I know that the two smaller angles plus that angle I don't know should add up to equal 180. So if I plug in x for 5x plus 2 and x for 8x plus 4, I end up with 62 plus 100 plus that unknown angle, I'm going to use a different letter, let's call it B, we know that that should add up to 180. So we have 162 plus B equals 180. And so that missing angle, the one we're looking for, is by subtracting 162, we end up with that missing angle being 18 degrees. Now the other way we could have done that was we could have noted that we have a linear pair right there, and so we could have taken the angle that we found, 162, plus the missing angle, and that adds up to 180. Either way, you're going to end up with measure of angle x, y, w being 18. So for this image, we were tasked with finding the measure of angle c and the measure of angle b. So if we look at our image, the measure of angle C lives right there, the measure of angle B, and they wanted that one right there. So let's go ahead and look at the picture, look at what we're given. It looks like, again, we have an exterior angle. So again, we can use this idea that 
the two far interior angles, D and C, are equivalent to that exterior angle. Now since D and C are the same, they have those little uh, angle marks that means they're congruent, we know that um, if we were to add them, we would have just two of the same thing. So to actually do this algebra, we're going to have 2 times 6x minus 5 equals that exterior angle, which is 11x plus 1. So now it's just a matter of doing a little bit of algebra. So we're going to have 12x minus 10 equals 11x plus 1. In this case, I'm going to subtract 11x from both sides, add 10 to both sides, so we'll end up with x equals 11, which again, just like in the previous example, was all fine and good, except it didn't really help us find the angles we were looking for. We know that angle C is equal to 6x minus 5, which would mean 6 times 11 minus 5, which is 66 minus 5, which is 61 degrees. So that's the measure of angle C. But we also have to find the measure of angle B. However, I know that the sum of the angles of a triangle are 180. So I know that the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle D plus this unknown measure is going to add up to be 180. Well, since C and D are the same, I know that 61 plus 61 plus the unknown B should add up to 180 which is 122 plus the unknown angle. Subtract 122 from both sides, and we should end up with the measure of angle B being 58 degrees. And again, this is what's kind of cool about geometry is that there's always lots of ways to go about doing things. We could have also plugged in X and found um, that angle, that angle plus the missing angle B adds up to 180 because they are a linear pair. So for this example, we were tasked with finding the measure of angle N and the measure of angle P. Now for this one, it looks like we know that we have a couple of congruent pairs of angles here. So what we're going to do is use the third angle theorem. The third angle theorem says that if two of, the ang two of the pairs of angles in the triangle are congruent, then that third pair of angles are also congruent, meaning they have the same measure. So in this case, we know that 3y squared is equal to 12y squared minus 144. This is so exciting because as an algebra person, I love this, and I'm seeing, oh my gosh, it's totally quadratic. Since it's quadratic, we need it to equal 0, so we're going to subtract 3y squared from both sides. So we have 0 equals 9y squared minus 144. And since we all rocked it out when we did factoring, we know that that is a difference of squares. I'm writing really bad today, sorry. So since it is a difference of squares, I know how to factor this guy. I know that that is going to be 3y plus 12 and 3y minus 12 because you take the square root of each term. One has to be positive and one has to be negative. And now, since this is in factor form and I know that it equals 0 using the zero product property, I know that either 3y plus 12 equals 0 or 3y minus 12 equals 0. Then again, we just use some algebra. For the first one, subtract 12 from both sides, you get 3y equals negative 12, so y equals negative 4. The other one, add 12 to both sides, so you get 3y equals 12, so y equals 4. Now we're not quite done because our task was to find the measure of angle n and the measure of angle p, so we're going to need to plug those into the expression for these two things. However, since I know they're the same, I'm just going to choose the easier one and plug that in. Now what's cool is that no matter which one you use, since you're going to square it, you're still going to end up with the same thing. So 3y squared is going to be 3 times 4 squared, which is 3 
times 16. And so that works out to be 48 degrees. And again, since those two things are the same, both the measure of angle N and the measure of angle P is 48 degrees. All right, so for this example, we needed to find the measure of angle Q and the measure of angle S. It's totally an S, I swear. All right, so looking at our image again, I see that, okay, even though these triangles are abutting each other, they both have the uh, two pairs of congruent angles, which means that the third pair of congruent angles, or the third pair of angles, are congruent by that third angle corollary. So what that means is that those two things are the same. So we can say that 2x squared is equal to 3x squared minus 64. All right, so again, yay, quadratic. We need to get this to equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. We're going to get 0 equals x squared minus 64. Now again, this is a difference of squares. You can also factor this normally, imagining that you have 0x in the middle. What multiplies to be negative 64 and adds to be 0. And when we factor this, we are going to end up with 0 equals x minus 8 and x plus 8. So using the zero product property, when we solve these two, we're going to get x equals 8 and x equals negative 8. But again, since we're squaring it, it doesn't matter which one we choose to use, we just need to plug one of these back in. And again, since Q and S are the same, I'm going to choose the easier one. So 2 times 8 squared is 2 times 64, and that works out to be 128 degrees. Since by that third angle uh, rule that we have, we know that Q and S are the same, I can say that both Q and S are 128 degrees. For this image, we had a million things that we needed to find. The first thing we needed to find was the measure of angle U, X, W. So if we look at our image, U, X, W works out to be that little angle right there. Now, I see that I have a pair of parallel lines. And I also know that this line is perpendicular which means that that little angle right there is right. Now, by the acute angle corollary, I know that when I have a right triangle, the other two angles add up to be 90 because they're complementary. So I know that the angle I'm looking for, I'm gonna call it X in this case, plus the other acute angle, which is 54, are complementary, which means they add up to be 90. So now we just need to subtract 54 from both sides. We're going to end up with our missing angle that we were looking for is 36 degrees. Now we also had to find the measure of another angle. And the next angle we needed to find was the measure of angle U, W, Y. So if we look at the image that we have, U, W, Y is this little guy right here. What I'm going to use is the idea of a straight angle. I know that a straight angle is an angle that's 180 degrees. So if I look at what I know, I know most of that straight angle. I'm just missing this unknown one. I'm going to call it x, which means that 54 plus 78 plus the missing angle adds up to be 180. So now it's just a matter of doing some simple calculations. 132 plus my missing angle is 180. And subtract 132 from both sides, my missing angle is 48 degrees. Now, we still had some more we had to find. We also had to find the measure of angle W, Z, X. So, if we look at W, Z, X, W, Z, X. That's this little guy right here. So we have a couple of ways that we can go about solving this. Remember that we have parallel lines here, which means that this is a transversal to our parallel lines. 
We just spent a lot of time finding the measure angle x right here, and that is a vertical angle to this one right here. So the, we also know that this angle is 48 degrees. Now, by using this idea of the alternate interior angles, I can see that the measure of this 48 degree angle is the same as the measure of the angle I am looking for, which means that it is 48 degrees. Done. You could also do this same example another way. You could also look at it as another straight angle and use same side interior angles to find this whole big angle right there. However, really the method I use is probably the fastest way to go about it. All right, now we still had another angle that we needed to find. We needed to find the measure of angle x, y, z. So if we look at our picture, x, y, z is this top angle up here. Now, x, y, z is also a big, big, big right triangle. And if you remember, it's been a little while, two examples in between, about that acute angle corollary. We know that those angles, the two acute angles, are going to be complementary, which means they add up to 90. So the angle we're looking for, let's call it y, plus this smaller angle down there, let's call it z, should add up to be 90 degrees by the acute angle corollary. Now, we just spent all that time finding that measure of angle z. It was 48 degrees. So the angle we're looking for, plus 48 degrees, should add up to 90 degrees. Subtract 48 from both sides, and our missing angle is 42 degrees.